Hello viewers, how are you? Welcome to my channel. Some patients may present with a perforation or hole at nasal septum. Today, I am going to talk about nasal septal perforation. There are variety of causes of nasal septal perforation and it is most commonly traumatic. Trauma after septal surgery is very common. It is more common after SMR surgery than septoplasty surgery. After SMR surgery, it can occur in 17 to 25 percent of patients and in case of septoplasty, it can occur in 1.5 to 4 percent of patients. Electrocauterization of nasal septum for control of epistaxis may be another cause. Habitual nose picker can cause nasal septal perforation which starts from an ulcer formation which is known as peak ulcer and some persons perforate the nasal septum deliberately to put ornament. There are some pathological causes. Septal perforation can occur after septal abscess, nasal myiasis or maggot infestation. Some granulomatous condition can lead to the formation of septal perforation. These are tuberculosis, lupus, leprosy and syphilis. Syphilis causes perforation at bony part of the septum. Tuberculosis, lupus and leprosy cause perforation at cartilaginous part of the septum. Wagner's granulomatosis is another granulomatous condition and in this disease the whole nasal septum can be distracted. Rhinolith or neglected foreign body can also lead to formation of septal perforation. Some drugs and chemicals are responsible for septal perforation like prolonged use of steroid nasal spray. Recreational drugs like cocaine when snored nasally can cause the perforation of septum. Workers of certain occupations are at risk of nasal septal perforation like those working in chromium plating or soda ash manufacturing and those exposed to arsenic. In some cases, there may be no history of trauma, surgery or any disease for the causation of nasal septal perforation and these are the idiopathic varieties. The majority of the nasal septal perforations are located on the anterior quadrilateral cartilage of the nasal septum. Now come to the clinical features. It may be asymptomatic in some patients and it may be symptomatic in some patients perforations located on the anterior part of the nasal septum is more symptomatic than those located at the posterior part. This is because of abnormal aerodynamics which causes fast flow through the perforation and thus there is a drying effect at the level of internal nasal valve. Patient may feel blockage of the nose patient may feel emptiness of the nose. The blockage feeling is due to abnormal aerodynamics and crust formation and the empty feeling may be due to mucosal atrophy. There may be crust formation and when the crusts are removed epistaxis may be seen. A general feeling of discomfort and headache may also be associated. Patients with huge nasal septal perforation are unable to clear nasal secretion and the septal perforation may be associated with saddle nose deformity, deviated nasal septum, columellar retraction and intranasal adhesion. Whistling sound can be produced in some perforations especially when they are small. The diagnosis is usually based on history and anterior examination using thudicum nasal speculum. Nasal endoscopy can also be done for posteriorly located perforation for assessing the margin size of the perforation and associated abnormalities. It is important to remember that nasal septal perforation may be the first sign of granulomatous condition like Wegener's granulomatosis and may be the first sign of some collagen disorders like systemic lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis and relapsing polychondritis. So we can do some special investigations like CBC, ESR, serum electrolyte, urea, urine analysis, CANCA test, 
Triponemal investigations, AC titer, chest x-ray. Biopsy from the granulation or age of the perforation can also be done and fungus, mycobacteria should be looked for. Immunocytochemistry should be done to exclude neoplasm. So how to treat septal perforation? It can be treated surgically and it can be treated medically. The medical treatment is centered on reducing the drying effect and alleviate the crust formation and epistaxis. For this alkaline nasal douching, saline spray, petroleum based ointments are used. Sometimes obturators or special buttons are used to cover the inflamed edge of the perforation. There are a variety of surgical options for uh, repairing the septal perforation. These are free grafting, pedicle flap reconstruction, rotational or advancement mucoperiosteal or mucopericondrial flap reconstruction. The grafts most commonly used are temporalis fascia, mastoid periosteum, cranial periosteum, cartilage from rib or septum and bones taken either locally or from rib or from iliac crest. These operations can be done in one of the three approaches, the endonasal approach, the rhinoplasty approach and midfacial degloving approach. Endonasal approach can be done in case of a small perforation. Midfacial degloving approach is needed when the perforation is large like more than 2 cm in size. As I have mentioned, trauma is the most common cause of uh, septal perforation and surgery is important traumatic cause. So the surgeons can take some precautions during nasal septum surgery like septoplasty or SMR. These are elevating the mucopericondrial flap in correct plane, avoiding overlapping of mucosal tear. If there is any tear, it should be repaired with the fascia or cartilage. Excess mucosa after septal surgery should be sutured. The dissection should be started on relatively easier side which is the concave side of deviated nasal septum. If quilting suture is placed after surgery then it should be placed loosely to allow postoperative edema. And if a person feels that he has a regular crust formation in the nose and there is uh, very much drying of his nasal mucosa then he or she can use petroleum based ointment or saline douching or alkaline douching and should abstain from picking the septum. This is all from nasal septal perforation. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.